Good evening. Welcome to WSBI, your resource for success podcast program, where you get to meet inspiring women-owned businesses from across the country. And now for your host, Kimberly McElmore. Hello, and welcome to another night of sharing. With us, we have Dillis Victoria, founder of Event and Media Marketing Management and author of Your Life, Your Purpose, No Explanations. Welcome, Dillis. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, and Happy New Year. And Happy New Year to you, too. I mean, I'm excited. This is 2018. You are my first recording for the new year. Awesome. Yes. yes totally yes. awesome. Yeah, really great. So I'm sure that you have a lot to share because you have had a lot of things going on around you. But before we dive into some of those other questions, why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself? My name is Dills Victoria. I am 40. I'll be 41 in about a month and four months, February 6, 1977. Woohoo, Bob Marley. <laughs> Love him, Billy. <laughs> it's my birthday twin. Um, originally from New York, I actually just moved to Savannah, Georgia on December 22nd of last year. So my 2018 began when I took a leap of faith and just jumped into Savannah, Georgia. I really don't know too many people here, but I'm building community. And that's what life is about, right? Just jumping into things that's and right. into the unknown. And i um, type of person that live fearless in my fears. I do media marketing and social media management as well as event marketing. And my clients um, just range from a diverse group of beautiful womenpreneurs who are eclectic and different. And what I do is I create outside of the box opportunities for my clients, as well as just coach them along the way, whenever they're feeling stuck or they're frustrated, or if, if, if I need to speak them, talk them off the ledge, so to speak, right. then I'll also do that okay. and just make sure that they are completely different and doing things that are not of the norm within their industries. Okay. All right. So we learned a whole lot about you in less than five minutes. So <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna backtrack just a little bit here we're just gonna keep going back just a little bit so i definitely hear the the new yorker in you and i was so surprised when you're like hey i'm leaving new york and i'm heading to savannah georgia i'm like wow that is a huge difference in transition night and day so tell us tell me a little bit about why you decided to move to savannah well i was talking to such a client um back in august and I was still living in New York and I was just like, hey, you know, to give me a little bit of information about Savannah. And she started telling me about the history of Savannah, how it was historic and it was just very peaceful. And just my heart was just like, oh, my goodness, this is a place that I want to visit. So mm-hmm. I set out to visit Savannah um, in October of last year for Halloween and Pride. Mm-hmm. And I came down and I loved it. And my partner, she was with me and we, we just had an amazing time. And by the third day, I knew every street. I knew where everything was like I lived here. So that was an indication to, for me that this is home. Right. So I went back to New York and I started doing researching and I met someone here who actually was is a New Yorker who who's moved. Who, he moved here about three years ago and he just started giving me information and started looking for apartments for me. And that's how I ended up in Savannah. Got an apartment wow. and got everything going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that was a quick transition. That was very quick. Yeah, really but. Fast. But like they say, if you know, you know, and and I think that's awesome. But it's like I said, it was such a huge difference between the two entities and the areas. You know, I'm like, wow. And then, of course, mm-hmm. like you said, to take that leap of faith. I mean, that's pretty awesome for you to walk away from an area and a community that you have been involved with, I'm sure, for many years and have built yourself from the ground mm-hmm. level up. And then here you are starting almost all over again. So that's that's um very interesting. But I want to ask you. What inspired you to get into the business that you're in? Um, now, you're doing event and media marketing management. So tell me a little bit how this process works with you. Now, I know that I've absolutely had to, um, I, you know, having a great opportunity of meeting you. And then I'm going to be meeting a lot of your clients, too, down here in the uh-huh. near future. So explain uh-huh. to me what you do. What I do is um, when I have clients and they have businesses, depending on what the business is, I actually help them um, create the story within who they are and why they started their business in the first place and actually consistently 
break down the mission of what they're doing with their lives personally and how to incorporate it with their business professionally. Mm -hmm. So me being um, a certified life coach and motivational speaker, it comes in hand with being a social media marketing consultant or media marketing or even marketing because at times clients feel stuck. And so if you're not a life coach or anything, anyone that deals with like therapy or counseling or so on and so forth, if a client is being stuck, you wouldn't know how to help them where their business is concerned. And I base it off of just my life experiences and things that I've been through within my business that I share with my clients to give Mm -hmm. them um, motivation and just empower them to say like, hey, it's okay. I know where where you've been. I know where you're going. I've been there too. So it gives them a sense of calm and peace. And it also helps boost their confidence in their business. And I always tell my clients, you know what, share your story, whatever you've been through, you know, you're going from tragedy to triumph, share that because that's where your, your potential clients or your clients are going to come in because people want to know that you're relatable. People want to know that you understand and people want to know that you're not perfect. Then you go through stuff too, because as public figures, we tend to, um, not, not in, not unintentionally, but we tend to give off this type of vibe where our confidence exudes so much power that people seem to think that we all have we have it all together we have it all figured out when and as a matter of fact we're perfectly imperfect just like everyone else so when you share your story and you give a little bit of yourself to the public and you just let them know where you've been and where you're going where you come from it gives them a sense of ease and the intimidation decreases where they're like okay cool i can work with this person because this person is just like me and that's what I offer to my clients, for them to just be human and to evoke emotions and feelings on, into other people mm-hmm. and make that client feel like you are the most, they're the most, the most important person in that room or space at that time. Mm-hmm. And any message that they're giving on social media or any message that they're giving on their website or within their business itself, that it speaks to the person and the person feels like you're telling their story. Right, exactly. And and I, I like that concept. I love what you do. And that's the reason why I love doing this show is that it mm-hmm. gives women the opportunity to share their experiences and it allows people to realize that they are human. Because I always talk about just what you said that, you know, people when they see us and sometimes, like you said, we do it unintentionally, unintentionally to ourselves that People think mm-hmm. that, that when they see it, all they see is a shell. Nothing is wrong. That Everything in our lives are perfect. And, oh, you know, look at them. You know, they've made it. You know, not understanding some of the pain that you go through. You know, the painful process of trying mm-hmm. to be that, that mm-hmm. business owner and climbing that mountain. Because, you know, they're not there sharing that journey. They only see the end result of the journey. Mm-hmm. And, even, and even then, and we're not, it's not perfect. Right, right. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and even then, it's not perfect. But, you know, people just see the good side of it. And and that's why I think it's really important that, like you said, that we all share our stories and there's always somebody out there who can relate. And then Mm -hmm. they realize that what they're doing is that it's okay. You know, it almost gives them permission to continue to move forward and with their dream. So Mm -hmm. I think it's, I think it's awesome. So, but what, what made you, what inspired you to, to do, to implement this piece within your business? Because, you know, a lot of times when people talk about event and, you know, media marketing, you know, they're very, um, they're very basic when it comes to, oh, well, you know, we got the social media platforms that we use, you know, everybody uses them now. And that seems to be the main way, but what made you decide to implement some of these pieces? What inspired you to start the business and so forth? Um, I would have to say when I was 16 years old, I, um, was pretty much the person that everyone would go to where it came to planning parties or, um, events or just being a person someone wanted to confide in. So I've been doing this my entire life, but I didn't realize I was doing this type of work until like I found myself at 34 years old. Wow. And I realized that, you know, through all the abuse and trials and tribulations and things that I've been through mm-hmm. or that I put myself through, it took me to an, a different level and space in my life where I knew that I was that I was a leader and I stepped into my power and I knew that I was here to help people as a healer, whatever, which way that was. And I know that I, I loved event planning. I loved social media. I love media marketing. So I just decided to incorporate everything into one thing where I'm able to coach and heal and help and give messages, but also incorporate it in business. So mm-hmm. it's personal, but it's also business for me. So I've been doing it for a very, very long time. Mm-hmm. I just had to learn the science of how to just incorporate everything together into one entity and just make it work that way. And that's what sets me apart from everyone else that's in my industry. 
Right. I agree with that. I absolutely agree with that because I've definitely come across a lot of people who do what you do, but I think your personalness is what makes it special. Um, and like mm-hmm. you said, you can give them the insight because you've been there and you're living it. You're doing it mm-hmm. every day. And a lot of people, when they're in this industry, it's it's all about just making the money and, and making yes. the numbers work. You know, oh, well, even if we get this numbers, you know, everybody's going to come and see your put give you the likes okay well that's great but where's the business you know? <laughs> so, right you know and to me it's about like asking questions mm-hmm. and I always create pain points for my clients because mm-hmm. you know I always ask them like you have to take yourself out of the equation as the business owner mm-hmm. and you have to put yourself in the seat of the client or the consumer would you buy your product would you like right. your services um, do you feel like your service and your business has the utmost integrity? Like those are the questions you have to ask yourself as a business owner when you're trying to get the clientele that you need and you want for long-term longevity and success. That's so you true. have to take yourself out of the equation at times. And that's one thing that I offer them, like take yourself out of the equation. I ask them thought provoking questions for them to say, damn, like I didn't think about that. And it's a different perspective. Mm-hmm. So I give them different angles and options of what to look at where their business is concerned to how to create something amazing and beautiful that's also tangible and beneficial that someone would always want where their services and their business and their products is concerned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then that's true. I mean, and that's, and that's the the hardest part because we all know as business owners, we look at the fact that, Hey, we can do it better than somebody else. That's the reason why we we are in business. And, Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times we do forget that, okay, it's not about just you. It is absolutely about your consumers. It's about your customers. And, you know, when you're in the beginning, I know I've seen and watched myself go through this process for the last year and a half or so that trying to figure out, okay, how do I convey this to where people understand what it is I'm trying to give to them? And, you know, and still I go through that process because I want to make sure that it's not just about me, it's about you. And this is what I'm here to provide. Mm -hmm. What can I do for you to make your world better? Uh, you know, what can we provide as an organization to ensure that, you know, the resources are being uh, given to you that you need. So it's definitely uh, I like your concept because you do make people think. And that's the hardest part about being a business owner, because we feel like we are thinking all the time, but we're not thinking mm-hmm. in the aspect that we sometimes should be or need to be. And I, right. I think it's always important to have that person on the outside looking in to give us those mm-hmm. openings. And, and that's exactly what you do. So tell me, though, I mean, you've been in the business, um, I you know, read a little bit about you and you've been doing this for about 15 years. So talk to me a little bit about the challenges that you've gone through in this business. I've had to revamp my business <laughs> hundreds of times to the point where it's just like, what am I doing? And, you know, just giving up and like, going back to the drawing board and trying to figure it all out and see what works from what doesn't work and, you know, the failures and not making enough money and, Mm -hmm. you know, wanting to like just throw in the towel and and just something drag me back to it. It's like, no, we need to finish this. You are a go-getter. You're driven. You're resilient. You know that you got this and you're great enough to do this. So it's just that chatter in the head and creating stories in my head and, you know, what I can't do for what I couldn't do because I started out with as a life coach and I got my certification and Mm -hmm. doing motivational speaking, but the one-on-ones wasn't happening the way that I would have liked it to. And so many people weren't ready for that. So I had Mm -hmm. to like flip it in a way that, oh my goodness, let let me work on with people that are business orientated, who are aspiring entrepreneurs or aspiring business owners or business owners who are just in in the beginning stages of their business because they need coaching and they need someone who is creative and ready to just take them to that next level and just be outside the box and create these amazing opportunities. And once I flipped it to that, that direction, everything started trickling like crazy, Mm -hmm. like ridiculous and I think the challenge with that too is making sure that I am connecting with the right clients because not everybody's your client right and that's the hard part about what I do too because because of my nurturing spirit and just being so caring and so loving I want to help everybody and a mama but you know you can't do that at times <laughs> right right well yeah and then and, you starve on top of it too yes when you, you just help yeah. that right <laughs> right and at times your, your your service or my service rather may may not be something that is for the person that you know I'm I'm working with so mm-hmm. there were times where I had clients fire me or there are times where I had to fire a client because it just wasn't the right fit or there was something that wasn't working. And the thing about it is too, and this is um, something that I had to learn where there's a difference between media marketing and social media management and event marketing. 
um, versus sales strategy. So a lot of times when clients, when they come to you for, or come to me rather for social media or media marketing, I have to sit down and explain to them like, I'm not here to increase sales for you. I'm not here to increase productivity. I'm just giving you different ways of creating options for your business. Mm -hmm. You are the brand of your business. You have to be the one to be the spokesperson to sell yourself and pitch yourself in such a way. Like I can create the content for you. That's fine. But I am not a sales strategist. I'm not going to say, okay, well, you'll have you'll have X amount of money by the end of this month or end of this time. You have to put in that type of that part of the work that's on you. Right. I, and I, I agree with that. Go ahead. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. So a lot of times, you know, it's kind of like a misconception because you do social media and media marketing and event marketing that the money is going to trickle in. It may. I'm not going to say it's not. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, as a client, you definitely have to put in the work and the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's kind of what I was talking about earlier that, you know, you there's a lot of organizations out here saying, hey, you know, we can get your likes up. We can do this for you. We can guarantee you that, you know, and of course, you're going to want to try it because you, you do want people to come and look. But the key is, is like what do, what happens after they look? You know, and mm-hmm. and see what what you're about, and you're absolutely right that you have to be the person to sell your brand, your image. You know, you know why why yeah. should people want to come to you? And that's important. It is very important, and that's probably the hardest part that I've even learned being in business. Um, because mm-hmm. you know, being in the social media world was something that we didn't have to do 20 years ago. You know, it nope. wasn't that important. <laughs> it was like, nope, you right. walked out, you talked to people, you shook hands. You know, you did the everyday normal things. You know, you didn't have to worry about how many likes you're going to get, you know, or had to pop on right. Instagram and Twitter. I was like, I mean, it's been a huge lesson for me last year of understanding how to use a social media platform. And of course my, my 29 year old son had to teach me that because I was like, right. I gotta my 24 year old brother was trying to teach me Snapchat. I was like, I don't get this teeny right. popper millennial <laughs> thing that you guys do. Like, I don't need to know that you're eating spaghetti at 3 p.m. Exactly. or whatever you're doing. I, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So I totally understand. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's definitely been a journey. And I think that, you know, what you provide to your clients, I I think it's phenomenal. And it's a great way to look at it from, I would say, from the inside out versus the outside in, because you're you're taking it from the from them from the inside to make them see what can happen as they continue to grow. So I think that's a really great um, aspect of what you're doing. Okay, great. Thank you. And so let me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was saying, I was telling, I tell clients too that, you know, you could have so many likes and shares and views and people can follow you all day long. But if nobody is inboxing you or emailing you about your services and your packages and your products, then it's just like, it's a waste of time. Yeah. Yeah. It's a waste right. of time. And mm-hmm. there's so many times, you know, you could have 10,000 likes and 5,000 shares, but if no one's interested in your product or no one's knocking on your door to say, okay, you know, you were so impactful with your, your Facebook Live or, you know, you were so impactful with your post or, or your service or your product or whatever it was that you were presenting that day. Mm-hmm. And I want to know about it. Then to me, sometimes it's just, it's just a waste of time because you're just wasting space, in other words. Right. right. So it's just definitely making sure that the product is so effective and so powerful and impactful that they're going to want to hit you up and inbox you or call you or email you. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. I absolutely. Yep, it, it seems like it takes one thing to to wake people up. I think I, I find this very, very interesting that when you say that you have author behind your name, it's like everybody like all of a sudden is like, oh, I want to talk to that person. I'm like, well, I'm the same person that you <laughs> knew before before the book <laughs> came out. So, I'm like, <laughs> but it just amazes me, you know, with that reaction because for whatever reason, people feel that you're solidified, you know, that you are the the person who knows everything when you become an author. So I think mm-hmm. that's a really interesting concept, but. Since I'm talking about that, tell me a little bit about your book. My book, uh, Your Life, Your Purpose, No Explanations, I wrote it back in 2013. I had um, an awakening when I went went to Puerto Rico, um, and I had a vision that I was going to meet an old woman who is my guardian angel, and she was going to tell me things about my life. So I went to Puerto Rico, and um, the day before I left, I went to a museum for the first leader who was a woman in Puerto Rico. Her name was Dona Fela. Mm -hmm. And her spirit spoke to me so strongly. She was for the people. She 
was um, just an open-hearted, open-minded woman where, you know, she pretty much empowered everyone, encouraged everyone, fed the orphans and fed the homeless and things like that. And her spirit was so strong in me that I was in a museum crying like I just lost my mama. That's how that's how emotional I was. And the um, tour guide was just like, hey, you know, the message from her is for you to go back and write and for you to tell your story and for you to help people figure out what life is, looks like for them. So I came back to New York and I started writing my book. It, it it went from a sentence to a paragraph into full blown chapters, and that's how it came up with your life, your purpose, no explanations. And the book is just based on um, no longer holding yourself back, no longer people pleasing. Uh, I have a chapter called The Art of Saying No, where you know don't feel guilty about saying no. No is not a bad word especially when it comes to your sanity and um, just making yourself a priority and not allowing other people to, you know, make you feel bad or brainwash you into thinking that that word no is bad because of their own gain or their own intention. Mm -hmm. And uh, also in the book, I dedicate specific chapters, chapters to specific people who's helped me in my time of need or vulnerability within that chapter. And I also ask thought provoking questions within the book. So it is a, it's a, a book for self help and empowerment, but it's also a workbook and also a book of gratitude. Wow. That's awesome. Well, I definitely have to get a copy of that. Cause I've always wondered, I, I love the titles. So I was wondering what it was truly about. So that's a very um, interesting mm-hmm. concept. And I love how you have implemented how people, you know, assisted you and helped you along the way when you really needed them. So that's important too, that, like I said, it's another part of sharing your story and and people understanding your journey. And I think that's a a beautiful piece that you provided. So tell me though, um, you know, and we all know it's a new year and so forth. And I, I'm not one who particularly cares for resolutions because 90% of the time when people do resolutions, they never seem to stick with them because they really don't understand (laughs) what a goal really means and what it means to be on your grind 24 seven. But if you had to give um, some advice to any person who decided they would um, want to open up a business, what advice would you give them? Research, do a lot of research and find a mentor within that industry to help you along the way, to guide you, to teach you things that you may not even know about. Make sure that you know um, what it takes financially to run your business, what it takes mentally, psychologically, spiritually to run your business, but also be vulnerable in asking for help and the things that you don't know seek help about those things because we're not going to know everything in business but um at least if we try to find out more about what the industry is about or what it what is entailed in the industry Mm -hmm. then i think you would have succeeded so much more than when you're trying to do it by yourself i don't think anybody can do anything by themselves where business is concerned there always has to be another person involved that's going to give you a helping hand or you know just hold you accountable in the process at the same time and um just just be um don't be afraid just jump just if the business is calling you and if it's that's something that's weighing on your heart every single day and in your mind you have to allow yourself permission to allow that dream to become your reality and put it into fruition into the universe and don't be afraid to fail like i said with my business i had to go back to the drawing board a hundred times over in order for me to get it right and it's just not giving up and just staying the course and just being determined to know that it's going to work out and just take all the list the little failures and the mistakes and just turn them into lessons and messengers that you messages that you put forth into the business moving forward. All right. Yep. Well, that is very well said and absolutely correct. You know, with when it comes to a business and great advice because uh, you know I think a lot of people they're still standing on the fence. You know, they're sitting on the fence every year talking about oh I'm going to do this I'm going to do this and they never do. And a big part of it I I do believe is usually the resources. It's really trying to figure out, you know, you can find them now, but it's so overwhelming. And that is one of the things that I love about what I try to provide in the organization with WSBI is that, you know, having all you as members, it's very important that you're providing resources. You're having an opportunity to con- connect and communicate with each other in a way that you may not have been able to do before because you're constantly trying to reach out to those people who are either doing something similar to what you're doing or you're just trying to communicate in a way that, hey, I've got a business here and this is what I can offer so having those connections, not being afraid to leap and knowing those resources are available, it's an important uh, aspect, but you're definitely right. You know, it's just, you, you got to get out there and do your research. And that's the hardest part. Most people don't want to take the time. 
to do the research. And next thing you know, they got a business. Next thing you know, they're out of business because they didn't take the time to, you know, take it step by step. It's no different than crawling and then, you know, walking and then running, you know. So I yeah. um, I think it's important. And even when you're in business, as you said, you know, you're you're not going to get it all right the first time. It's going to take you many nope. times <laughs> to get mm-hmm. it right. So and, it, and it's about community and not competition. And not not everyone that's in your industry in the same industry as you is your competition. I mean, we are we should be able to support each other and share ideas and share knowledge and share experiences mm-hmm. with one another in our industries. And you know, not downplaying the other person or you know devaluing what that person has to offer because you just never know. Exactly. And I mean just in life is experiences experiences that you go through and experiences that another person goes through that can teach you or mentor you or coach you or train you or however the case may be but it's just being open and willing to the process of asking for help right that's right that's right absolutely Mm -hmm. Um, on that note then um can you tell (laughs) listeners how they can get a hold of you so if they need some help they can find you Definitely. Um, you can always uh, shoot me an email, info at dillis.com, D-H-Y-L-L-E-S.com. Uh, website is dillis.com. Um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. I'm not too keen on Snapchat. Not as yet. I will get there in due time. I need to have Snapchat 101. But everything <laughs> is Dillis, D-H-Y-L-L-E-S. I'm the only Dillis that's on Facebook or anywhere around the world. Yes, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so I should be I mean, it's so funny because, like, I call T-Mobile or, you know, mm-hmm. any of the, the um, organizations that I deal with or anything like that or companies that I deal with. And they're like, so, you know, um, what's your email address? I'm like, Dillis at Gmail. Info at Dillis. They're like, wow, this name is unusual. I've never heard of it before. I'm like, thank you. So. Right. <laughs> You absolutely stand out because no. I, I asked yes. you the same question. I'm like, what? what? Did you say, how do you say your name? So, yes. Yeah, I get that you know. so much. And it's so funny because my little brothers tease me all the time. Like, I call them. But like, hi, Tahilas. Hey, Dillis. Hi, Felice. Hi, Felice. <laughs> hi, Dials. I'm like, you know what? Whatever. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm always being teased with my name. But I've I've grown to love my name as I got older. When I was younger, I oh, couldn't stand it. I'm like, just just call me Victoria or Vicky. That's my nickname or right. D or something. Like Dillis, I just, I, I'm like, what, 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 mommy, why? Why would you, what, is the, what the hell is a Dillis? Like, what is that? You know right. what I'm saying? But what, now. What would you think it, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But now um, that I'm older, it's like, you know, I embrace the name. Mm-hmm. It's, it's very you know, it's different and, and original and uh, unique, just like myself. So my name actually definitely defines who I am as a person. And I absolutely love Now I love it. Before I was just, why? But now it's like, yes, I am Dillis. So it's wonderful. Yeah, it definitely stands out. And it, and it, and it absolutely works with your brand. I'm like, yeah, that is a great name. Because <laughs> you never you never forget it. You know, even if you don't know how to pronounce it, you never forget what it looks like. So I'm like, that is awesome. But anyway, (laughs) so, but anyway, I want to say thank you for coming on tonight. Do you have any last words for the listeners? Um, just live in your legacy instead of leaving a legacy. Do things now. Today, it's your time. You know, we know our birthday. We don't know our death date. And until that point, you are to live life to the fullest and however you see fit, however happiness comes to you, whatever peace looks like to you, do that. And just live fearless in your fears and just take a leap of faith because you just never know. And never allow opportunities to pass you by because you don't want to be on your deathbed or in a nursing home torturing yourself with shoulda, coulda, woulda, and you didn't. That's right. Absolutely. Alrighty. Again, like I said, thank you for coming on tonight and sharing your story with us. For everyone else, enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night, everyone. We will be back next Thursday evening at 7 p.m. Follow us on Spreaker, www.spreaker.com slash user slash WSBI. View our new WSBI website anytime at www.wsbillc.com and on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Instagram. 